All right, everyone, welcome back for the episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Wednesday, June 22nd, 2022. If you like the content, subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, comment, etc. Or come find me on carnivoretrades.com right here in the corner for swing trading alerts and analysis. Anyways, here, so a couple things to talk about today. Markets basically flat, but an impressive recovery after a gap down. And I said yesterday, I was like, you know, I don't like... I just don't like that gap up that we got, and I didn't like how they closed the VIX above 30. So there's probably still some more risk here. And obviously there was, they faded the futures overnight. We gapped down, um, they defended the gamma wall at 371, um, so give them credit. And you know, we had a nice little push off the lows and then really just some chop here. A lot of Fed speakers today, uh, a lot of jaw boning. The market didn't really seem to be moved too much by anything they said, um, but bonds did get a nice bid today. Um, so that did, you know, we'll talk about bonds in a little bit here. But the bigger thing to me is take a look here at the UVXY. So yesterday I said, it, you know, I was a little concerned. I said, I don't like how well this held up, especially in the afternoon here when the market was trying to kind of push higher a little bit. It faded off the highs and the UVXY finished really um, nicely off the lows. And it was only down a couple points yesterday. I think the VIX was down about three, four percent and the market was up 2.5 percent. So that's usually a red flag. You want to see the VIX down a lot if the market is up that much. And we didn't get that. Now the UVXY pushing lower here. Let's take a look at the VIX. So yesterday we talked about that psychological 30 handle and we, we are below that now. So when you combine the gap down and the recovery today, I don't care that we're, I don't care that if we, even if we close negative, market's about to close right now. I don't care if we close negative or not. What I care about is that you held that recovery off the lows and the VIX lost that 30 handle. So a nice recovery, a gap down, and then a close to the flat line really reminds me of this candle right here from the 24th where we gapped down we tested lower prices intraday we still closed negative but we closed well off the lows and then what happened right after that we got that beautiful squeeze there um you know probably about six seven percent uh in just you know three trading days there on the spider so that is a scenario that could happen but the one test though that volatility still has in my book here is if we roll the tape back a little bit further we can see this 29 handle, which I think is a little bit more important than the 30 handle. Now the 30 handle is a good psychological number, um, you know, for obvious reasons, but this 29 handle, this was really the breakout to me. So this goes back to May of last year. We had that big spike in September. And then uh, towards the end of the year, we had that uh, one spike here. Market's closing now. Sorry for that loud bell there, but VIX closing at 29.19. So a little bit of market on close by here. So it held the 29 level into the close. But in any case, here is your spike. We came down, we got above it, we came down, we got above it. So this really seems to be more like kind of the safe zone here. Below 29, now I would say safer zone, because this mark, it, you know, this market is very treacherous regardless. But um, if we break below this, I think that I'd give the market the upside bias. You know, probably to, you know, on the spiders, probably at least to 390, maybe up to the 395 where that uh, extra gap window is there. There'll be a lot of resistance in this zone. And then maybe you can make another leg up after that. Now, let's not get ahead of ourselves, but, you know, maybe afterwards you can make another leg up after that to that 408 area. But that's, you know, going to be, again, down the road. We're not looking for anything like that just now. But that 29 handle, if that does go, I'd give the market the upside bias here in the near term, but still kind of a flattish close down uh, 18 basis points here on the spiders. They pushed us down a little bit towards the end of the day. Um, I wouldn't make too much out of it. The important thing is you held those, you came well off the lows and you held most of those gains. Um, and if we take a look at the hourly here, take a look at this hourly pattern. So you had a nice inside bar here on the hourly yesterday, we gapped down. We never closed below that uh, low. We got a nice surge up here and then one, two, three, four, five, six inside candles here. Still finishing above that 50 hour moving average and the 20 hour moving average. So if this area can hold tomorrow, there's a good shot you have of moving up here and maybe testing this pivot high around 384 here on the spiders. So somewhere in this area, you know, give the market the upside bias if it can get a bid. Now, the only problem is you are in a downtrend and, you know, that's the reason why this pattern failed and why the other you know inside bar patterns we've seen on the hourly and so on and so forth that's why they, those have failed um so be aware of that you know this market's not out of the woods and if we do roll over here you know there's nothing to say we can't go down and test that 360 area and maybe those you know original targets that i was talking about like um you know 358 357 somewhere in that range 
uh, if we were to roll over. If we do get down there, I expect us to bottom for a summer rally. Um, so that's just kind of what we're looking for here. Uh, triple Qs, same kind of thing here. Down 15 basis points on the day. Nothing terrible, though, you know, again, gap down, came off the lows. Actually started to outperform the spiders here during the middle of the day. And then at some point, they kind of crossed over and basically went to a one-to-one -one performance uh, ratio. Dow in a little bit better shape here. Again, Dow is a you know blue chip index, essentially, so that makes sense. And then the Russell here, basically kind of on par with the spiders and the triple Qs here. Uh, down 20 basis points on the day. Again, still below this uh, critical 170 area. If you get above this 170 area on the IWM, I think that that's a pretty bullish indicator here in the near term. So that's an area to watch. And again, that's basically this monthly trend line here. Now we still have you know a week and a half of trading to close back above this area here on the IWM on the monthly time frame. So. Keep that in mind they could easily save this here's your weekly we did get a pierce below that on the week if you get a weekly close above this i think it's likely that that gets reversed and we probably go up and fill this gap um, at some point you know that's just kind of a near-term sort of prognosis here um but that's essentially what we're looking at right now with the russell um let's take a look so semiconductors again you know down a percent and a half 1.4 percent here on the smh it still held this nice level here that critical level 202 i talked about recently it's above that and you know it's trying um you know it's getting a bounce would like to see a little bit more strength in the semis they are a good leading indicator um we're not quite seeing that yet but again we'll kind of we'll have to just kind of wait and see it does look like the market is in kind of a chop mode and we're kind of just trying to figure out which type of direction we're going to go in here over the next week or so but um, semiconductors hanging in there okay cloud software again continues to outperform actually scratching out a gain here so up 20 basis points well pretty much everything else was down so cloud still holding on you know nice little double bottom pierce there but never confirmed below it so cloud software is in a good position here and you know it's definitely one of the stronger sectors right now now transports on the other hand a weak sector down 1.12 percent here on the day i don't like this pattern honestly um let's take a look here get rid of these lines and get rid of this one too there we go so you almost have kind of a sloppy kind of bare flag here um outside of this little kind of outside candle you almost have kind of sloppy kind of bearish consolidation so there is a chance you know that this would be kind of the case that um to be made that there is a little bit more downside if the dow transports have more downside generally everything else is going to and then we talked about this area on the weekly now i still think the downside's limited because you got about twelve thousand. 400 or so there's your 50 percent fib right there you got a nice consolidation base and then the 200 week moving average just below that so even if we were to fade down a little bit i wouldn't say there's a whole lot more downside but for what it's worth the dow transports are on the weaker side here all right so yields here we talked about bonds a little bit basically i showed you guys this yesterday on the 10-year Look at that beautiful broadening pattern there. And we went up there, pierced that, got up to that 3.5 area. I thought we had a little bit more upside to 3.66. That would have brought you up to this pivot here, a nice little monthly pivot. Um, but it got up to there, broadening pattern, and nice pullback there. And then on the weekly, look at that topping candle right there, shooting star off the top, already overbought, kind of a blow off candle. And then the same thing here on the 30 year. Little doji candle, shooting star, overbought and then look at this 200 month moving average and double top pierce like the pullback there so there is a good shot here of yields finally topping out here um at some point in the near term that doesn't mean they can't go a little bit higher at some point but i think they're in backing and filling mode right now um at the very least here this does look like kind of a last kind of blow off gasp here um, and i do think yields have to have to do some backing and filling at the very least if not if they haven't already topped out um, but here's the TLT here up 2.75%. So nice gap up and held the gains. So a uh, nice move there for bonds again, wickedly oversold here. And, you know, again, like I keep saying, yes, inflation obviously puts pressure on bonds, but at some point that inflation will cause demand destruction, especially in consumer discretionary goods. And that can be, you know, investors will just look at that and say, well, you know, be, based on how beaten down bonds are, at some point, they have to get attractive. So that's sort of the thought process there. We'll let the market tell us a little bit more here. Anyways, HYG, again, basically flattish. Um, and again, like I said yesterday, if, if HYG finished the day green yesterday, I would have felt a lot better about the market's chances of continuing to bid here. 
HYG flat, nothing terrible here, but um, this has been a little bit of a leading indicator. Remember this uh, surge that it had off the lows um, about a month ago, that sort of pre, um, this initial surge right here, this green candle, sort of kind of led the, the S&P here and kind of told us that we were gonna, you know, break out and have that, that big run that we had in late May. We flip back over, yeah, so we had that big three bar surge there. Um, this candle here, this red candle, which was also the candle I was just talking about, um, that one right there, coincided with this candle on the HYG. So we had a big green candle there with a nice reversal in the markets, and that kind of told us that we were going to move higher. If I see something like that on the HYG, I'll definitely let you know, because it has been a leading indicator. And um, again, until this bottoms out, or at least comes uh, gives, us, gives us some relief, say the market's probably going to continue to be under pressure. At least that has been the case for the most part lately. Anyways, home builders here, uh, XHB, basically flattish, but again, starting to put in kind of an inside bar there. Um, so that's technically bearish chop until proven otherwise. Same exact thing on the ITB and VNQ still inside of this red bar. Now, if you close above this red bar high, it, this uh, VNQ is cleared up to gap fill and maybe, you know, the 93 handle, which is where you broke down from. Um, so we'll give that to the upside bias if it can clear that red bar. But for right now, it is still below that. XLF, um, same kind of thing, you know, down 20 basis points, came off the lows, won't make too much out of it. Broker dealers, same kind of thing, came off the lows, but again, still inside of this red bar. So it needs to close above that. Um, to negate that and then it can you know possibly put in some type of a near-term low and maybe have a rally all right crude so again bonds bidding crude down today um, so that's more of a traditional relationship here as far as kind of a you know a, a disinflationary type macro trade right um, so crude you know came down finished down four percent pierced that 100 moving average and i told you guys it's going to go to that trend line here um, and it held that trend line for now. It came off the lows. We'll see what kind of pattern we get here. But ultimately, I still think crude needs to go into backing and filling mode. I think it needs to get down to 85, 90 bucks. It, it, it's just simply, this, there's just too many bulls in the trade. I mean, there's just no one for the last several months. It, it's very hard, very hard pressed to find anybody who could even give me a bearish take on, on oil. And that, when I see that type of thing, it's, you know, it's not that it can't move higher at some point, but market mechanics will eventually find a way to shake out those weak hands. And I think that's what we're seeing right now. But in any case, you know, crude held up, you know, down 4%, held that 100 moving average. It held this big, uh, big trend line here, the blue broadening pattern. And again, the reason why I say 85 would be your downside target is that's basically coinciding with this, um, this upsloping trend line. Now it's at 90 bucks. You know, it doesn't mean it can't pierce it though. So oftentimes when you come down, you pierce these levels and you see these pivots here, that's at about 85. So if we were to come down here and maybe tag that 20 month moving average over the next month or two, it would probably coincide somewhere in this zone. So that's kind of where I'm looking at uh, moving forward here with crude. If we continue this backing and filling mode here, as far as XLE is concerned, I've already got levels worked out for that. And we will be taking them in carnivore trades. Uh, I don't want to give out too much here. Uh, we did make some nice money on Chevron a few weeks ago on the short side. Also have a good buy level on this one already, and I already think I know where it's headed. But in any case, XOP finishing down today, uh, down 6% again. So another cut there for XOP. XLE did hold the uh, lows from last week, but still on the weaker side here. And uh, that's uh, XOP again, sorry, OIH. Again, the weakest closing below that 200 moving average. Um, we'll see if it confirms tomorrow, but... Um, Pretty big fall there for OIH. Like I said last week, it erased all of the invasion gap. So all that good stuff that happened for oil um, from a news you know, perspective was erased in about two or three weeks here on the OIH. So um, that's why I keep telling everybody, don't chase these energy names. You know, Wait for the correction, wait for the pullback, because if you chased up here, you're already down, you know, let's say 310, 230, I mean, you're down almost 100 points here on the OIH in a couple of weeks. So that's why you don't chase these names here. You gotta wait for the corrections, wait for the pullbacks. Anyways, Nat Gas here. Um, I no longer really like 650 here. I think it can get through that. Um, we'll see what it does tomorrow, but I don't like how you bounce twice there. So I think this wants to go a little bit lower here. Um, doesn't mean it can't bounce in the near term, but it means that percentage wise, uh, it's not you know a risk reward trade that I really want to be involved in. So I think it wants to test a little bit lower prices here. 
uh, moving forward. Anyways, dollar index, um, bit of a quiet session, just kind of up, down, all around, gave you a little spinning top finish. We'll see what it does here. Um, I still think the dollar is a little overbought, and like yields, it does need to come back in. But again, if we have recession fears, that could kind of make the dollar diverge from bond yields a little bit. Um, so maybe that correlation starts to break down. We'll have to see a little bit more here. Um, but again, kind of a quiet day there for the dollar. Um, same thing with gold, you know, nice little uptick there for GLD in the corner of my screen. Basically flat though. Um, we'll have to see this pattern mature a little bit more. The only thing I don't like, uh, which is what I said yesterday, is you kind of have this bearish inside bar here on the weekly. Um, and it's flirting with those, you know, that 50 and 100 moving average. So it's hanging on there for now. Now, if you close above this red bar high on a weekly basis, that, all that goes out the window. But for now, um, a little bit more neutral on gold at the moment. It is holding up though, so we'll give it we'll give it credit. Same thing with silver. Um, basically, just kind of a quiet day, down 1.6%. Uh, basically held this 21.22 area, so it held that support uh, for now. Platinum again, kind of sideways day. Palladium, same kind of deal, bearish inside bar there on the daily for palladium, so be aware of that. And then copper also lower, got down to almost down the area, so we got down to 388. I said it have support around 387. Um, basically, close enough for government work, we'll call it. Got a nice bounce off of that. We'll see if it can push a little bit lower, maybe satisfy that downside target. Um, but again, it got a nice bounce, so it, it is technically into support. It probably can hold up here. We'll have to see what it does a little bit more tomorrow. Here's the weekly there. Yeah, so we'll see what it does by the end of the week. Remember, a shortened trading week, so... Um, only two more days left already. And then next week, we're at the end of the month of June. Um, pretty fast month. So anyways, copper coming off the lows. We'll see what it does tomorrow. Maybe it can uh, put in a little bit of a base here. I just don't really like that. the look of that candle as, you know, really a bottoming candle. I wouldn't really call it that. But it did get very close uh, to my support level. So anyways, here, Bitcoin. Uh, again, kind of a quiet day. So you know, we got off the lows here. I said, you know, it was attractive down at this level, and it is. Now it's trying to put in kind of a bullish inside bar. The only problem is, like I've been telling you guys, you're in a massive downtrend. And when you see that, these bullish patterns can fail. However, when you get oversold enough, um, sometimes you have to just have a snapback rally. And I'd say there's a good chance of Bitcoin being able to do that here. But again, a relatively quiet day, down 2.5%, which is absolutely nothing for Bitcoin. Um, and it's holding the upper range of this green bar. So we'll see if it can get a lift here. Um, overall, if it doesn't, you know, it's got that 16,500 area. And then if it can't hold that, you know, you're down to that 12,000, 12,500 area. I don't think it happens right now, though. Um, it just you know, just putting that out there. So I'd give it the upside bias here to have a little bit of a rally, but it has surprised me a little bit more here recently. Um, so again, we'll just have to see what we get tomorrow. And bottom line right now for me is can the VIX, you know, can the bulls push that VIX below that 29 handle? If that does happen, I'd say we got a good shot of uh, getting up back up to that 390 area. But your first test is going to be getting above this sort of pivot high here at about 384 here on the spiders. You could have closed above that. Um, I would give the market, you know, a good upside bias. And I'd say we probably bottomed for some type of a summer rally. So again, we'll take it one step at a time. Really have no clear direction, even with today's close. Again, going into tomorrow though, watch this nice hourly inside bar. That could give us a nice move here. And uh, just do a quick calculation on that. I mean, that's a good, that's good for, you know, seven points or so. So you know, let's say we bottomed out here at 373 tomorrow, we could easily get up to, you know, that um, 381 handle, which would basically take you back, you know, back to this pivot high and this breakdown area. So, you know, there's there's upside in this market here. But again, you know, when you're in a downtrend, you know, these moves can fail. Here's the triple Qs, same pattern. Uh, but the triple Qs are, this is a little bit of a positive here. If you notice, the triple Qs have been off the lows more so than the spiders here. So you know, we had this breakdown right here, but we kind of held this lower, <clears throat> this lower band here. And on the spiders, we had a much deeper sell-off because we lost energy. So energy makes up a lot more of the S&P than, uh, than it does the NASDAQ. And so that's been weighing down the S&P a little bit. But when you see tech leading, that's usually a good sign for the market. So the triple Qs have you know, slightly outperformed off of the lows a little bit. So we'll definitely make note of that. Um, nothing's a guarantee though. Again, I think that VIX 29 handle is going to really tell us a little bit more. 
And um, yeah, we'll just take it one day at a time until we get a little bit more direction. Anyways, guys, going to wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com and I will talk to you all tomorrow.